Trail bikes and enduro bikes both offer the chance for thrills, spills and covering terrain fast. But what's the difference between them and which one is best for you? Trail bikes typically have between 130 and 150 mil travel front and rear and two 29 inch wheels. Enduro bikes, on the other hand, usually have over 160 mil of travel and are equipped with either a 27 and a half inch rear wheel or two 29 inch wheels. Why the difference though? I'll talk more about the reasons why in a moment. Travel and wheel size are the easiest ways to spot whether you're dealing with a trail bike or an enduro bike. To find out why that can be difficult, let's look at the similarities, then dive into the differences before finally taking them for a ride to see which is best. Both trail bikes and enduro bikes feature full suspension, dropper posts, disc brakes, one by drive trains with large cassettes, provision for bottle cages, riser bars, short stems, and roomy cockpits. Whew. So there's lots of similarities, right? Well, let's look at the differences to see what sets these bikes apart. They might give you a clue as to which one will suit you the best. As I've already mentioned, the amount of travel on offer is one of the most significant differentiators between trail bikes and enduro bikes. Trail bikes have around 130 mil of travel front and rear, although more aggressive trail bikes may have a longer travel fork up front. This helps slacken the bike's head angle and offers more grip up front, whilst allowing them to carry speed on smoother terrain where the movement of suspension, especially on the rear, can rob momentum. Enduro bikes usually have 160 mil of travel or more, with 160 mil being the benchmark and aggressive enduro bikes offering up to a whopping 190 mil of travel. This is great for taking on the big hits of enduro courses and keeping traction on rough terrain. However, the extra leverage of the suspension systems comes at a price, and the price is weight. The extra metal needed adds mass, and the higher leverage on the longer components mean they need to be built beefier. Trail bikes are usually equipped with 29 inch wheels. They roll faster than smaller wheels and offer the potential for more traction because of their larger contact patch. However, a smaller rear wheel can offer some advantages, like extra maneuverability and clearance for your backside. Modern enduro bikes have a 29 inch wheel up front, just like the trail bike, but are often available as either a mullet with a 27 and a half inch rear wheel on the back, or as a full 29er. Bikes like this Intense Tracer, along with others, are available with either setup according to rider preference. Enduro geometry has been becoming more aggressive every year, with some head angles even slacker than modern downhill bikes. Take this Intense Tracer 29, as a super slack 63.7 degree head angle, which is perfect for steep descents. Whereas this large size Kotic Flare Max trail bike has a steeper 65 degree head angle. Both bikes have a similar size cockpit with 480 mil reach on the enduro bike and the trail bike just 10 mil longer. But the trail bike's geometry is much more conservative than that of the enduro bike. Why is this? Well, enduro bikes need to respond to extreme terrain, big hits and high speed, hence the extreme geometry. Trail bikes, however, are designed to excel on less technical terrain, so less radical geometry allows trail bikes to feel more intuitive and playful to ride. If you want to find out more about where the mountain bikes have reached peak geometry, hit the link here. Modern trail bikes are marvels of engineering, using exotic materials like carbon and clever design to minimize weight and make light, responsive and fast accelerating trail machines. Not to be outdone, enduro bikes are also as light as they can possibly be and use the same exotic materials and clever designers. However, enduro bikes are heavier than trail bikes as they have to be strong enough to cope with the demands of modern enduro tracks. On top of the need for strength is the necessity to carry around more travel than trail bikes. This necessitates heavier suspension components to deal with the increased loads and longer stroke. You can expect a trail bike to weigh in at around the 30 pound mark with enduro bikes coming in at a couple of pounds heavier, around 32 pounds. These are just rough estimates and with both disciplines, the more you spend, the lighter the bike will be. Enduro tracks cover some of the harshest terrain found in all of mountain biking, with modern courses often looking more like downhill tracks, but with added pedaling. And punctures can ruin races. Well, 
they can ruin your trail ride too, but at least there's the opportunity to stick in a plug or use a canister to reinflate tires at the side of the trail, and you're not against the clock. With these facts in mind, manufacturers make enduro tires with tougher casings, which are heavier than typical trail tires. Trail bikes therefore accelerate, decelerate, and turn faster than enduro bikes, thanks to the lighter tires. Enduro bikes also have tougher wheels than trail bikes to shrug off big hits, but this comes with a weight penalty. Trail wheels are therefore lighter than enduro wheels. The steeper angles, low weight and 29 inch wheels mean trail bikes are quick on the climbs, flying up faster than the equivalent enduro bikes with their extra travel, extra weight and more aggressive descent focused angles. Modern enduro bikes are certainly no slouches and will happily winch you to the top of the steepest gradients thanks to their large cassettes and steep seat angles. But even with this, a trail bike has them beat. Let's go and take both bikes on a descent and then a climb to see what the differences are when riding. Okay, so here we are on a typical enduro track, flat graded trail, and uh, the enduro bike, as expected, feels really stable in these rough, tight turns. Yeah, it's, it's good on the braking, back wheel track as well, super smooth. So the long travel is eating up the bumps and the slack angles are making it feel really stable at speed. Okay, we're on a faster rolling section of track here. Uh, the speed's a little higher, it's a little flatter. It feels a little bit more laborious to move around with the big travel. Scratch is more hard work to pump as well. So it feels really stable in the corners, but a little bit less responsive to my input. And yeah, it's just a bit less inspiring. I'm having to put in more pedals to go the same speed as I would on a short travel bike. It's not as entertaining. I'm not able to whip it around the way I would be a short travel bike. The extra weight of the, the wheels and tyres is really noticeable on these flatter turns where you just want to pump and carry good speed. Oh, it's nice all these rough bits though. I know these are tough wheels, I've got tough tyres, so I can just hit these rocky edges with no worries. But yeah, great on the rough stuff. Carries good momentum. Okay, so I've popped my dropper up and about to tackle the climb. The steep seat angle on the enduro bike keeps my weight nice and far forward, but it doesn't feel that sprightly. I can feel the front suspension, the fork, with its 170 mm travel moving around. It's a little wandery with the slack head angle. It doesn't quite respond at these slow speeds of the climb. So although it feels stable, it's taking a bit more of my concentration to keep online than it would on a short travel trail bike. The heavier wheels and tires on the enduro bike are noticeable with every pedal stroke up the steeper parts of the climb. This is uh, it's hard work, this. Okay, so here we are, black graded trail on the trail bike. And straight away, I can feel how fast it accelerates. It's super quick picking up speed, light bike, light wheels, but oh my gosh, it's rough on the holes. Uh, I don't want to slow down on the brakes, even though the black wheels are skipping around all over the shop. But the suspension's really good, there's just not much of it. It's really easy to move around with the steep angles, but oh, it's just a bit twitchy. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so now I'm taking the trail bike on a faster, flatter section. So I can feel already that the lighter tyres and the steep head angle combined with the shorter travel really just make the bike float around, skip around. translated into making it feel poppy and fun and entertaining. The steep head angle and the short travel means it's super easy to just move it around and just feels faster and more engaging when the enduro bike crunch. at times was starting to feel lethargic. So now it's 
time to see how the trail bike copes with a climb. So already the, the light weight of the bike makes it feel less laborious up this climb. I've got it on lockout just like I did with the enduro bike and I can feel a lot of my energy going into driving me forward. This steeper 65 degree head angle means the bike's really easy to move around if I want to change my line. So climbing on the trail bike really is a pleasure. It's that much easier to just float up the climb, feeling like you're putting in less effort for covering more ground. Well, that was awesome fun. Two top bikes and two top trails, but which is best? In conclusion then, whether you need a trail bike or an enduro bike all depends on the kind of riding you like to do. If you only ride rough enduro tracks once in a blue moon and spend the majority of your time on flatter tracks or at the trail center, get a trail bike. And equally, if you're a gnarly enduro rider, don't get seduced by the lightweight of a trail bike. It will be faster on the climbs, but the descents will be better tackled on something tougher with more travel and aggressive angles, like a full on enduro bike. And be honest with yourself. Whilst riding an enduro bike can help you unlock black graded trails, having a gnarlier bike isn't going to make you a better rider. Being overbiked on an enduro rig with too much travel for your needs isn't going to be much fun. As ever, if you enjoyed this video, click the like button and subscribe for more. If you want to find out whether an enduro bike can keep up with a downhill bike, click the link here. Now what? More coffee?